Hello, everyone. My name is Jeff DeFilippi, and I'm Director of Product Management at ARM in the Infrastructure Line of Business. And I'm also a, a C6 Board of Director member. And today I'm going to be talking about C6 2.0 and, and what's in development within the consortium today. Uh, and really, the, the focus is going to be on a transport agnostic interface uh, to really enable uh, lower latency and new integration options with the C6 protocol. Before talking about what's coming uh, down the pipeline with new C6 developments, let's talk about uh, a little bit more about uh, recap what, what C6 is and, and where we are today. Uh, first of all, C6 stands for Cache Coherent Interconnect for Accelerators. You know, the ability to take processing elements and, and acceleration elements and combine them together in interesting ways to, to go after uh, workloads such as video processing and transcode or network acceleration, storage acceleration and analytics and machine learning. We're really focused on these key workloads uh, with this type of interconnect. And, and with the cache coherency model, we can, we can provide a, a new set, a way of sharing data between uh, these elements. And we often refer to it as seamless uh, integration and data sharing. Uh, the ability to pass data back and forth and share a common memory system uh, are, are a critical element. The other critical element with CSIC today is that it's built on the PCIe standards and infrastructure. And what that allowed uh, the developers to do is really leverage the, the ecosystem around PCIe, all the standards and interfaces and mechanicals and how you stitch these elements together. You know, that, that's out there on the market today, both from an IP perspective and also from a connector perspective. So, so we could just build on top of that infrastructure that's there today. So it really allowed us to get to market quickly and, and adopt something that, that's off the shelf and ready to go. And then last but not least, the current specification that's out there is C6 1.1, which supports up to, you know, 32 gig of transfers uh, based on PCI Gen 5. Uh, again, you know, building on top of that infrastructure. So, you know, out there on the market today, you, you'll see quite a few C6 1.1 and, and 1.0 devices um, that are implementing that standard. And then, of course, today I'm going to be talking about uh, C6 uh, 2.0, which is going to be exploring new, new transports and, and data rates that can be enabled in the future. So the other thing about uh, C6, if we look at the, the key elements, you know, we, we typically focus on three main areas. And of course, the first is the, the new data sharing model with cache coherency. Uh, you know, here on, on the upper left, you see a processor, an accelerator, and both sides have caches and both sides have memory. And, and now you can run a, you know, a single uh, operating system, you know, on these type, types of devices and the processor and accelerator can share the, the memory on both sides and cache the, the memory uh, on both sides. So it really enables that, that fine grained peer processing between those processor and acceleration elements. The second key attribute is, is flexibility and topology. The ability to stitch processors and accelerators and memory uh, in, in unique ways. So it could be a direct attach uh, device, you could daisy chain, you could create a mesh of devices or, or using a switch topology. So it really enables a lot of flexibility on, on system deployments. And then last but not least, it's built on a layered architecture that you see there on the right. Um, and it was always built, uh, you know, from the protocol perspective of, of focusing uh, the protocol, separating it from, from the transport. And although we, we built it on top of PCIe originally, we understood that over time the industry would adopt new potential technologies. We wanted to make sure that, that C6 was portable uh, to take advantage of new transports that, that are coming on the market. So this really recaps, you know, where C6 is today and the, the key elements uh, available. So now let's start talking about, if we were to start talking about, uh, you know, what else could C6 run on besides PCIe? And here we're really showing the scale from on the left side is, is a uh, interconnect that would be inside the device, you know, inside the silicon, you know, all the way to, to the right side, which is your scale out interconnects like ethernet and Gen Z where you're connected you know, thousands of devices together. Um, and, and then in the middle is, is, is kind of where C6 is fitting. So if you look in, in the in system, which is the, the middle right, you see where C6 is today, you know, leveraging the PCIe infrastructure, you know, kind of inside that, that server box, if you will. And then last but not least, you see the in package uh, integration, uh, which is uh, becoming quite a uh, hot topic these days, uh, really being driven by the economics um, of, of as, as the processing technology scales to, to more advanced nodes like seven nanometer and five nanometer, 
what you're seeing is the digital elements will scale very well, but the logical elements uh, are, are, sorry, the, the IO elements and, and physical layers like PCIe electricals or DDR electricals aren't scaling as fast. So th there's this drive and movement to, to, to separate these different devices and different technology nodes, but still package them together inside the package. So if you look at this continuum, on the left side, you get the advantage of lower power and cost. And as you move further and further to the right, you get ease of physical integration and, and unique ways of stitching the different elements together. Much more of a plug and play element on the right and, and kind of the tightly coupled integrated um, and, and performance optimized on the left. So now if we look at these different interconnects, you know, what are the goals for C6? The first goal is to look at the PCIe electricals but enable an, a new low latency transport. PCIe is great for plug and play capabilities. Uh, the, the packet sizes are great for when you're, when you're, when you have different uh, payload sizes like 64 bytes or 1K uh, bytes, you know, anytime you, it's really good for IO and flexibility. The disadvantage is latency. And in this model where you have fine grained data sharing, latency is critical for, for certain workloads. So if we can enable a low latency transport, we can still take advantage of the PCI electricals, but have a finer grain or closer couple sharing uh, of the data with a low latency transport. So low latency transport is, is one. The second main goal is to enable a, a brand new way of using C6 and integration inside the package. So now you have the capability to take different die um, and, and stitch them together, not just outside the package, but inside the package uh, using an optimized in-package electricals. Um, and what this really enables is uh, obviously latency goes to sound even more, but then it, it's more about the power and, and bandwidth density that you can, you can get with this, this in-package option. So it, it basically will enable a new set of integration options uh, for C6 uh, members. So again, just to recap the, the two goals, first focus on in-package integration, you know, enable the, the new closer coupling inside the package. We're talking multiple terabits per second to, you know, 10x less power than, than you would typically get if you connected them through the PCB. And, and again, that, that allows for new integration options and new innovation around that type of integration. The second thing is, is we want to look at integrating uh, SOCs from different technology nodes. So the high performance compute or acceleration elements can be on leading edge uh, technology nodes, while the IO and, and more mature uh, IP can be on a legacy node. And again, you can stitch them together and you'll, you'll get a cost advantage out of doing that. And then last but not least, we know that there isn't really a, a one size fits all uh, for this in package integration. You know, if you look at a high, high performance compute uh, device that's, you know, 400 watts, that has a very different performance and cost profile than, than maybe a 5G device that, that's 10 watts and has to sit out, uh, out on, a, on a pole. So there, there's very different needs within this space and we understand that from a C6 perspective and want to enable a, a wide variety of these packaging options uh, uh, to the consortium members. And the other key thing again is, is latency. So really look at um, you know, how can we optimize for latency and as we move away from PCIe, it, it provides that opportunity to, to look at something different. And the way we're doing it is, is looking at a fixed format, uh, basically moving from PCIe packets to a C6, fixed size C6 payload. And that really just simplifies uh, how, how you construct a, or the, the, the ability of the, the device to construct the packet and get it out, out the door quickly. And it removes a lot of the PCIe overhead that, that has to be there if, if you're just running on top of the PCIe transport. So it's this combination of a fixed format and removing the PCIe overhead that's, that's enabling this low latency uh, transport. Um, and then last but not least, what you'll be seeing on the market, uh, including PCIe is uh, a FLIT format, which stands for flow control unit. Um, and essentially what it is, it, again, is that, is that way to optimize for latency. So what we're seeing, what you're seeing on the market is this move from, you know, the, the standard packet interface on PCIe to a flip format that, that really is, is focused for um, uh, latency. And, and so you're going to get uh, many new options. So, so the key takeaway here is C6 is about uh, optimizing for latency. 
and still ensuring compatibility with PCI Gen 6. Okay, so what does this look like from, from an architecture perspective? Uh, here you can see the C6 2.0 layered architecture. On the top, you see the protocol, which is your reads and writes and cache coherency protocol, along with the, the link agent, uh, which is responsible for formatting the, the packets and handling end-to-end uh, -end link credit exchange. So, so again, that's the portable bit that, that's going to be defined in the C6 2.0 definition. The second key piece is that transport agnostic interface. We just need a simple credited uh, byte stream between the, the protocol layer and the data link layer uh, that's gonna be portable over those different types of, of data link layers. So having that, you know, that standardized interface there uh, and format will, will allow for that portability. And then last but not least, that, that allows for a lot of flexibility down at the data link layer in Phi. We're gonna see uh, a, a several different options down at that layer. And again, we wanna be flexible enough to, to operate efficiently over those different options. So the data link layer uh, in Phi will be responsible for the error correction, detection, correction, retry handling, um, along with the physical layer uh, for that connectivity, whether that's dot to die inside the package or chip to chip through uh, a PCB motherboard. And again, the, the, the characteristics of that physical interface will change depending on the type of uh, connectivity that you're looking for and, and packaging of the technology. So here now, if we take a look at that architecture and then apply it to the die-to-die -die integration for, you know, again, in-package in integration or the, the board level integration leveraging PCIe electricals, and you can see how we're mapping the architecture onto these different integrations. So on the left is the data die integration, uh, again, inside the package. And if you've been watching this space, you'll notice that there's quite a very uh, variety of different physical interfaces that are available um, on the market and being standardized through different uh, consortiums. But they typically fall into a, a serial type of, of interface, which is a differential surgery, similar to a PCIe electricals, but they're optimized for in-package integration. Uh, XSR, which stands for extra short reach, and USR, stands for ultra short reach are, are example of, of those differential certes. And with those certes, you can now, uh, you can extend, you know, PCI Gen 5 today is 32 gigatransfers per second. And with these new serial interfaces, you can really crank it up uh, quite a bit more, uh, up to 112 gigatransfers per second. So it can really open up the, the bandwidth, uh, again, between these devices. The second type of in-package integration that we see is parallel. Uh, just a very simple parallel interface, and, and it's used a lot when you want a wire density or have a, a really fine grain type of integration using a silicon interposer or, or fine pitch type of, of interconnect. Um, so again, you, you potentially could use a parallel interface with the, the portable C6 protocol. So that's the die-to-die -die integration. Now on the right side is, is how we're getting the, the lower latency transport, but still leveraging the PCIe electricals. Today, you can see the, the C6 1.1 protocol layer and, and C6 1.1 link layer right next to the 2.0 uh, protocol and link layers. And you can see how you can, you can have this combo, combo controller uh, that supports C6 1.1, PCIe, and, and C6 2.0 if you really want that low latency connectivity. And it kind of highlights or visualizes how we're getting a latency advantage. Again, by, by focused on that, that C6 flip uh, payload, and then having that direct uh, connection down into the data link layer. And we bypass a lot of that, again, that, that PCIe transaction layer and, and, and packet formatting that, that, that does add quite a bit of latency to the overall system. So now when we uh, take those two architectures and, and look at different devices, you know, this is really the device view uh, rather than the logical architecture view that you saw on the last slide. So on the left, you see a, a typical uh, SOC package. And inside that package, you can see a combined uh, compute element with uh, four acceleration elements. And I can use, again, that in-package Phi technology uh, using C6 2.0 to, to really uh, create my devices and, and, and have a scalable type of system around this integration. And then on the right, you see the board level integration. Uh, again, this is leveraging PCI electricals and, and, and from a connectivity perspective, it's gonna look the same as C6 1.1. What we're really enabling with C6 2.0 is a lower latency connection between these different elements. 
So that hopefully this is a good introduction to where we're going next with C6 2.0 and, and what we're trying to accomplish with the, the development uh, that's in flight today. Uh, again, we're looking at enabling a closer coupled in package integration, enable multiple terabits per second at a, at a fraction of the power and support the wide variety of packaging technology that is out there on the market today. And then of course, we're also focused on latency, you know, really uh, with a transport agnostic interface. So reduce the overhead uh, with the, the new C6 FLIT, have a direct connection down into that data link layer. And, and again, we're, our goal is to remain compatible with future technology that's coming uh, over the next couple of years, such as PCI Gen 6. So thank you for your time today.